as a prime matter, prima materia, to eliminate the propagation of the kind misunderstanding, Xavier decided not to translate key terms of Christianity, such as God, angel, and soul any longer. Instead, he directly adapted Western terms in his evangelical mission in Japan. The doctrine of human soul's immortality became a principal feature of his, of his teaching. To understand the European context, context of the doctrine of the human immortality, the University of Padua held the key. Padua was one of Europe's most important learning center for philosophy, medicine, and law. He belonged, it belonged to the Republic of Venice, which was a free and powerful Serenissima, Lord Seren, country. Because the doctrine of the human soul's immortality became prominent in the broader philosophical scene, the deity of the intellectual unity was taught at Padua's faculty of arts. This averroist unity of the intellect did not acknowledge the immortality of the, of the individual human soul. Bishop Piero Barozzi was not happy with this averroist doctrine. He preferred the teaching of Florentine Platonist Marcio Fucino, who advocated human soul immortality in his masterpiece, Platonic Theology, published in 1482. With the effort of Barozzi and others, the immortality of the human soul was adapted as an article of faith at the Hifs Lateran Council in Rome in 1513. Here it is degree. I quote, we agree that all those who cling to the erroneous statements of this kind, that is to say, the rejection of the immortality of soul, of the resurrection of body, and of the eternal rewards and eternal punishments, thus sowing heresies which are fully condemned should be avoided in every way and punished as detestable and odious heretics and infidels who are undermining the Catholic faith. Moreover, we strictly enjoin each and every philosopher who teaches publicly in the universities or elsewhere that when they explain or are introduced to their audience the principle or conclusion of the philosophers where these are known to deviate from the true face, as in the assertions of the soul's mortality or of their being only one soul or the eternity of the world and other topics of this kind. They are obliged to devote their every effort to clarify for their listeners the truth of Christian religion to teach it by convincing arguments. End quote. Here, the task of philosophers clearly began. The degree seemed to have been influenced by the revival of Platonism in Quattrocento, Florence, where Vigino lived and wrote one of time. However, before and even after the year, that, that year, Pietro Pomponazzi, student at Padua in his youth and professor at Padua, Bologna, and Ferrara, defended the possibility of the death of human beings, individual souls, on the basis of Aristotelian philosophy and reason. Among his students of Padua, there was a future cardinal Gasparo Contarini from a noble Venetian family. He was sympathetic to the Society of Jesus and did not accept the theory of his master. Now, let us turn to the second major figure of the Jesuit missionaries in Japan, Alessandro Pagnani. 
He was born in Italy in the town of Chieti in 1539. Chieti is a major city in the Abruzzi facing the Adriatic Sea. At the time, this region was part of the kingdom of Naples and the Spanish rule. The Adriatic Sea connected his paese, his country, with the Republic of Venice. Galignano then went to Padua to study jurisprudence under the aegis of the Republic. He graduated with a degree in law in 1557. Later, he was remembered for his ability to settle legal issues that occurred in Japan. To grasp Bariniano's philosophical tendency, it is important to examine his university's education. To this end, I would like to point out characteristic features of Padua. It is well known that medieval and renaissance universities in Europe consisted of four faculties, arts, law, medicine, and theology. At Padua, arts and medicine together formed one faculty, while both canon and civil law represented another faculty along, along with material arts. Generally speaking, faculties of theology was well, non-existent in Italy unlike Paris and Oxford. Unlike Paris and Oxford and the Iberian Peninsula. In addition, the Collegio Romano was founded as the educational center of the Jesuits in 1555. It became the largest and best known institution of higher education in Italy. In 1556, Pope Paul IV conferred on the Jesuits the right to award doctorates in arts and theology to its students. However, this institution was not a university because it neither, neither taught nor awarded degrees in law and medicine. At Padua's Faculty of Arts, students learned the philosophy of Aristotle for medicine and the practical sciences, not from theology. The teaching they received can be characterized as wholly secular. It was often called secular Aristotelianism to reflect its distinctive feature. Bagnaro's consciousness of the three Aristotelian principles of learning that is authority, reason, and experience, is prominent in his writings. Here, authority, authority means the philosophy of Aristotle and his commentators. But this authority was not absolute, absolute for Bariniano. Facing the unfamiliar traditions and customs of Japan, he emphasized reason and experience, degrading, learning, authority and abandoning preconceived opinions. To repeat, in Paris, Xavier studied scholastic and Thomistic theology based on Aristotelian philosophy. At the same time, Lefebvre de Tabu, disciple of Ficino and Pico della Mirandola, was trying to establish a new interpretation of Aristotle colored with mysticism. Interestingly enough, acknowledging the Lateran principles, Xavier was all influenced by Renaissance Platonism. In response to the Buddhist negation of the afterlife in Japan, he emphasized the human soul's immortality conforming to the Catholic article of faith. Galignano, in his turn, student role at Padua, where the secular Aristotelian tradition of logic and reason was dominant. Aristotle remained vague about the human soul's immortality, and his commentators did not fully establish the human soul's survival after death. But Galignano emphasized those points in his Catechismus Christianae Fidei. 
Carniano respected Zelia as a spiritual guide and described Zelia's life of virtue and other apostrate in his work, Indian History. Nonetheless, he also criticized Xavier's life of, for tolerating the credibility of people who construe extraordinary, extraordinary nature events as miracles. In this case, Galignano can be regarded as a good disciple of Pomponazzi for the denial of such events as miracles. Perhaps he also knew the idea of Ficino according to whom miracles would occur less frequently in his age than in antiquity. Bariano was convinced that a plausible explanation of these phenomena was required in order to persuade non-believers even if such a theory was not based on Virginia Platonism. Despite that he was a Spanish Aristotelian, Pariñano Jesuit companion, Pedro Gomez, earnestly taught the human soul's immortality at the Japan Jesuit Collegium College in the late 16th century, as is shown in his work called Compendium. He vehemently criticized Buddhism. <coughs> Christian dogma, missionaries such as Xavier, Bariano, Gomez tried to impose the truth of Christianity and the correctness of the doctrines of the human soul's immortality on local people's mind. The so-called Christian century in Japanese history ended around the middle of the 17th century. The country completely closed the doors to clergymen and laymen from the Catholic countries of Southern Europe. Only the, <coughs> only the, the Netherlanders were allowed to carry out their business for 200 more years. However, Japanese intellectuals could read the works of Christianity in Chinese translation from the first half of the 18th century on. Among these works, the very important treatise, the true meaning of the Lord of Heaven, composed by Italian Jesuit Matteo Ricci. Reading the Christian mission in China, Ricci expounded in this work the differences between Christianity and other local religion, religions, such as Confucianism, Taoism and Buddhism. Bariano knew his talented disciple well since he went to Ricci's hometown, Macerata, as a rector of the Jesuit college. The work of another Italian, Giulio Alleni, follower of Ricci and Bariano, was also translated into Chinese and imported to Japan. Ironically, Hirata Atsutane, one of the most important Japanese philosopher and Sintoist of the 19th century, learned Christian ideas through these Chinese translations. As is seen in his work, Honkyo Kaihen, key ideas such as a human soul's immortality and survival along with the reward and punishment in the afterlife were integrated into his own interpretations of Japan's native and traditional religion, Shintoism. He also edited the treatise of the tale of the reverse of Katsugoro, 
which tells a story similar to that found in the anecdote and legend of Ficino. These Christian Platonic elements were just some aspects of his multi-layered philosophy. Posthumously, his eclectic synthesis of ideas had a considerable impact on the nationalistic Shintoist ideology behind the Meiji Restoration in 1868. The latter replaced the Tokugawa shogunate, which had condemned many Christians to death. Thank you for your kind attention. We now